Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. I try to stress to those in my audience and those students that come through the training sessions that we have here to study and really get to know the materials you're working on. And in most cases uh, in our industry, it's going to be clear coat. 95% plus of all the vehicles running around out there today have a three layer system um, that includes the clear coat. So I really stress and urge that you get to know clear coat. I'm going to cover as much as I can today in this short video. So in that system, you have the panel, you have a thin primer coat that helps the color coat adhere to the panel. Then you have the color coat itself, and then they put the clear coat on top of that to Guard the color coat from UVA, UVB damage, chemical, dirt, and anything Mother Nature can throw at it. I do need to also stress that this layer is becoming thinner and thinner as time goes on and we switch over to the water-based clear coats from solvent base. So as of now, we would like at least two mils of clear on top of the color coat. And that is just a fraction of the thickness of a post-it. So very important to get to know it. So let's jump right into the video. Automotive paint is made up of really a combination of products and materials, uh, some solvents, fillers, resins, pigments, and other additives. And really clear coat is automotive paint just without the pigments. In most applications, it's an acrylic lacquer layer, and usually mixed with some type of a thinner to make it thin enough to spray it. Again, 95% of the cars have a clear coat system. They steered away from single stage in the late 80s, and only a small portion of vehicles have either single stage or satin or matte finishes. Needs to be taken care of, needs to be cleaned properly, needs to be protected. By the way, acrylic is a form of plastic, so it's a thin layer of plastic on top of the color coat. Keep that in mind. We'd like it to be, again, two mils thick, which is usually two to three layers of the clear applied to the surface. And that should add the two mils, but with a waterborne uh, clear or water-based clear, switching away from solvent-based for the environment, leaves a thinner layer behind and that barely gives us a mil, mil and a half in some cases. That's why you're getting the thinner readings. When sprayed, that first layer is quite thin and the second and third layers are full and wet. And something to keep in mind, a lot of the UVA and UVA uh, inhibitors within migrate to the top of that 25 microns as the solvent or the water uh, cures and escapes from the clear coat and evaporates into the air. It's just a natural process that happens and you need to be aware of that so you don't remove too much of it. Clear has a half-life, being able to pr protect from the sun's harmful rays and that's normally five years. It's cut 50%. So keep that in mind, a 5, 10, 15 year old vehicle. I mentioned solvent-based and water-based clear coat. When I mentioned water-based, it's still 65% Solvents, they're just cutting down on that again to help protect the environment and those spraying the clear coat on. It goes on cloudy, it clears up, and it cures much slower and thinner than a solvent-based clear. There are two popular clears used, 1K and 2K clear. 1K doesn't require, let's say, a catalyst or, or a hardener, where 2K does or it will cure feeling tacky. The 1.5 to 2 mils of, of clear required uh, is converted over to about 35 to 50 microns for those who use that measurement. There are many types of imperfections you may come across as a detailer or taking care of your own vehicle from swirl marks. Those are really love marks from improper care or touching of your vehicle. With no protection, you touch your vehicle, you will scratch it. There's also deeper scratches. There's uh, rail dust. Uh, acid rain, industrial pollution, overspray, and in some cases, oxidation. So we show on the channel here and in class, wet sanding, uh, correction techniques from enhancements to one steps to multi-step corrections to uh, spot correcting using the wet sand method, using dual action polishers, rotaries. We try to cover it all. 
And remember, that clear coat is there to protect the color coat. It's very thin. It'll protect from UV damage, chemical resistance, uh, protect, protects from dirt, gives it that deep gloss look. And you need to have a little bit of common sense and care when you're working with it. So get to know the material. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. That is the three layer system that includes the clear coat on top. There are other surfaces you're going to come in contact with, which is um, single stage. So you have the panel, you have a primer layer, and then you have a thick color coat. And most of the time that has a little bit of clear mixed in with it. You also have satin and matte finishes. So you have the panel, you have a primer layer, then you also have a color layer that is really wavy. So it has peaks and valleys that are much higher than the orange peel texture you have on clear coat. You want to treat them chemically, not mechanically. Clear coat, you can treat and uh, correct that and take care of it chemically and mechanically. And I have shown that in many of the videos. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. Pick up one of these to assist you with your correction needs. And we'll catch you in the next video.